today I just have a couple hours for van work, so I'm not going to tackle any big projects, but tomorrow is going to be window day, at least for the big window that's going in the slider. I have not got my other two windows, which are on back order from Van Windows Direct. So initially they were supposed to ship mid-March, it is now early March, and I um, contacted them the other day to find out when they would be coming because obviously I'm moving in several weeks and I want to make sure I got them. They said that they would now be shipping in um, late March. So hopefully that will happen and I can get them before I leave here in mid-April. But um, we'll just have to wait and see. In worst case, I guess I'll contact them and give them a new address and on my parents' house to ship them there. But I would like to get all the windows in actually before I leave for Florida. So fingers crossed that that's going to happen. But let me just show you a couple of things that I am working on today in terms of just general cleanup and odds and ends of projects that need to be done. First of all, you might recall that I mentioned that I needed to clean this door before I could put the kill mat in. So I've gone through and scrubbed that up. It was really full of a lot of dust and you can still see there's some areas like in here where there's a little bit of grime that I need to get out. And I don't know that I'm going to actually be able to get all the way down in there and get all that out. I'm going to do my best just because when I finish the van, I don't want a lot of old dust and yuck in there. <laughs> just I like kind of clean things. And this is another area where there's just a lot of wear through from use. It was a work van before I got it. So there are a few places where the paint is just worn through and it is galvanized. So I don't really need to prime and I'm not super worried about rust, but just from an appearance factor and also just to be extra safe, I'm going to go ahead and prime this and paint it as well. If anyone knows what all these little blue marks are, let me know, please. They are all over the van, and I don't know if they're from the actual production of the van, or maybe it was some sort of inspection after the fact, maybe after the van was repossessed. Um, it just seems to be like a waxy kind of crayon, and I'm able to get it off, but they are literally everywhere. Yep, everywhere. The window I'm putting in tomorrow goes in this cutout. Uh, it's a factory cutout, at least, just uh, since there's often a window here from the factory. And it makes it really easy to cut out the template for this window. So basically where there are two pieces of metal along here is where I will be cutting tomorrow. The person I bought the van from was a master mechanic and I was talking with him about all the mechanicals of the van and particularly the fact that I wanted to cut holes and put windows in. One of the tips he had was to actually tape the window before you cut it because it helps to catch any burrs or little pieces of metal. He said it also gives you a cleaner edge in the process. So I'm gonna go ahead and outline this lip all the way around with tape so that tomorrow when it's time to actually do the cuts, I'll be ready to go. This tape that I'm using is actually heavy duty painter's tape that I found at Home Depot. I went to Lowe's and they didn't have much other than duct tape and painter's tape. So when I was in Home Depot this morning picking up a power caulk gun, which I'll show you tomorrow, I didn't even know there was such a thing till the other day, uh, I found this and it's good for exterior. It's got extra strong adhesive. So I'm gonna use this both for outlining the window and then also when I put in the window, we're gonna put some tape on as just an extra measure, measure of security while the window um, adhesive is, is drying or curing. So this is pretty neat. It's kind of plastic stuff, but you can actually tear it as you go, just like you would painter's tape. So it's, so far it's been really easy to use. And there is the outline of my window all ready for my cut, which I'm gonna to do tomorrow, just because my boyfriend can't come over today. So <laughs> he's gonna come over after work to help me put the window in and I'm gonna go ahead and have it all prepped and ready, have my whole cut out and everything when he gets here. It's only midday, but I got up at, I don't know, 5.15 this morning. I'm gonna get up really early. And uh, just because there's a thousand and one things to do before you move out and start full-time van life in addition to building the van. So anyway, I'm a little beat. I'm gonna take a lunch break and then just um, try to decide what project I wanna tackle next in the next couple hours. And my little lunch break is over. As much as I would have liked to just flake out for a couple hours before my appointment later this afternoon, it's time to tackle another little project. So a little project I have is to use twine and this is hemp twine to kind of weave a web where I can put my insulation here in the walls. But I'm gonna use the existing holes here and just kind of crisscross a little bit so that I can get the wool in there and it won't fall down. And the reason I chose this hemp twine, which I got on Amazon, is because it's naturally mold and mildew resistant as opposed to a lot of the other like synthetic twines. Um, it's one millimeter. I probably could have gotten, I know I could have gotten two millimeter, but I thought I'd go with the thinner one and I'm just gonna give it a try and see how it goes. Just like everything else in this fan, I've never done it before. So I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna start just winding my twine this way, up and down and see what happens. This twine 
is nice in that it's actually got some body to it, so it's not flopping all around when I'm trying to thread it through. So here's my first pass at creating a web of twine to hold the insulation in. And I'm not planning on using any spray glue, but that might change just if it's not adhering at all. I don't want it to kind of slide down and out of the bottom of any of these areas, and it's possible that it might with gravity, but my hope is that I will get the insulation in there, that the twine will hold it, and then once I get my walls up, then that's gonna continue to hold it. Before I call it a day, I thought I'd just do some quick measurements in the van. I'm actually sitting on the floor here. There are two things that I really want for my garage and my bed. Number one, I wanna be able to put bikes underneath in the garage and store them, um, possibly on a rollout tray, but not necessarily as long as they fit standing up with the um, front tires off, the front wheels off the forks. And I also want to be able to sit up in bed. So I was just measuring to see, based on my height, how, you know, how far is it from my bottom to the top of my head? And my boyfriend is not, as he's not super tall, but he's also got a longer torso than I do. So I think I just measured myself as about 33 inches and he's probably maybe 36 inches. I'll have to check it next time I see him. And the, the distance up there to the ceiling is is not that great so I'm trying to figure out with flooring and ceiling and bed what the ideal um sorry there's squirrels playing in the trees over there yeah I sure hope I can sit up in bed but if not I guess I'll be able to lounge um comfortably I hope yeah these vans look so big when you see them on Instagram and even when you go if you're used to driving a smaller car like I am and you go to look at them, they're like, oh, wow, that's big. And then you get in, or at least me, um, after I bought it and I started getting in to clean and walk around, I thought, man, this is just not a lot of space. And it's bigger than the tent that I used on the AT, my little two-person tent, but it's certainly not a lot of space. And I have to maximize every inch as best I can, and hopefully I'll accomplish that goal of having a nice-sized garage for bikes and climbing gear and hiking gear and all that fun stuff, as well as practical things like batteries and water and still be able to sit up in bed. I had a little time and since I was sitting here thinking about how high is my bed going to be and how much headroom am I going to have, I decided to just go ahead and mock up my basic floor plan on this carpet. And this is actually called an RV mat that came with the van. It's got a uh, foam on one side. Let me show you real quick. See the foam on one side that's actually lined up with the bumps along the bottom of the Permaster. And I think I may end up just using this as kind of my underlayment for my floor. My floor is kind of laminate planks. I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but it's got a bit of underlayment underneath it, but this I think will make good insulation and extra base layer. So that's my plan. It's in the van now after I, I, I can tell you I cleaned it, but it's covered with dirt because we moved furniture yesterday. But anyway, um, this is gonna be the base of the floor and it fits in the van. So it's a good kind of canvas, I think, for laying out the floor plan. There's the door there, and if you come in the door, that area is going to be basically the walkway, the hallway, and then right here where I'm standing is the bed. I'll show you that from another angle in a minute. That area there is going to be my kitchen, so I will have a sink and a stove, a little pull-out pantry, and probably a vertical bulkhead there just to divide and provide a little privacy on the bedside. Over here, the larger block is going to be a complete floor-to-ceiling cabinet. It's going to house my refrigerator with a drawer underneath, uh, some bookshelves and cabinets for games, things like that. And then over here is going to be a bench seat, which will have a toilet right there, and then some storage underneath, and possibly some cabinets up above. I think that right there is some good space for kind of some recessed cabinets. Uh, right now, I don't have plans to put a window there, but I kind of want to reserve that space in case in the future I decide that I want more light. I will have windows where the blue tape is on that side and over here, as well as this big window that I'm going to put in tomorrow. So hopefully that will be enough light between that and the front and the back windows. My back doors came with windows and then I'll have a fan, um, which is going to be somewhere right above that area, not above the bed, but above the this kitchen and close to the toilet, that sort of thing. So that is the current floor plan. That's the space for the bed and the garage. And now that I have it laid out, I actually feel a little bit better knowing that everything I'm thinking about is going to fit in here. I just still need to work out the, the vertical space for sitting up in bed because the top of the bed will probably be a little higher than those horizontal ribs there. 
Now, looking at this, if the bikes are kind of probably, or the, the top, bottom of the bed's probably going to be about here, um, you know, and then the, the height of the mattress and everything's coming up this high, that should give me enough space on top of the wheel wells to have my batteries and my electrical system on this side. And then over here, I've got a 26 gallon water tank, which will probably sit next to the wheel well, but I can create some storage space up above the wheel well for some of my backpacks and climbing gear and things like that, tents, whatever outdoor stuff we decide to bring with us. So anyway, that is the first look at what hopefully will soon be my humble new home.